that you pulling it together. Yeah. I just did a little dance for everybody who didn't see me. Yeah. I was uh, feeling it. Well, you were feeling it? I was feeling it, yeah. First of all, it wasn't a dance. It was half of a shoulder shake. It's so a lot you, better than anything you can do. That's the best dance do. you can do. Hey, uh, no, bitch. Uh, we could, I could dance I've as well you. as you, <laughs> I, at I, least. I, I've seen you on the dance <laughs> yes, floor. Yes, and I have seen you on the dance floor. I've seen both of us on the dance floor. You haven't seen me on the dance floor. Awkwardly swaying back and forth. You haven't seen me on the dance floor recently, though. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to see you at the wedding, so I want to see you throw down. You're going to see me at the bachelor party. That's right. I am going to see you at the bachelor party. I want to see you dancing hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're everybody that's coming is sober but me, so. Exactly. You're going to be the only drunk <laughs> I'm just going to wear day. the bachelor party sash. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that way, when everybody brings the shots, exactly. they don't have to, like, pass them. That's you know? right. Hey, goo man. You're going to be like, right. actually, I don't do shots. I'm like, yes, he does. Yes, he does. There we go. Uh, hello, <laughs> questions. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Your Queer History. We are happy to have you back. We're your host. I am Evan Jones. And with them, as always, is Paul Hobbs. Ah, we want to... Mm, they're not our sponsor. Do not tell about their name. Okay. Do not talk about their this name. Do not say their name. This is brand diet... That's not- um, cola. Cola. It's a diet <laughs> cola, which we, now we've just advertised Walmart's brand yeah, of soda. Or like Aldi. <laughs> or anybody that's not Diet Coke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we wanted to thank you for showing your support by downloading our episode and listening today and every day. Just, you know, download them every day and keep getting those Constantly. Up. Wake up every morning. Put an alarm on. Hit download. Tell your mom to download. Tell your brother to download. Tell your grandma to download. Tell that neighbor that you hate to download. Tell the bus driver to download. If you really hate someone, tell them to download. Like, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. Because we will be in their air just chewing it off with queer history. And random facts. And random facts. And if you want to help get our name out there even more, then please share our podcast, as we just said, on social media and tag us when you do. You Check get a us. free retweet. Hello. That's right. Free. Everybody wants a retweet. That's right. Um, and we have, uh, we're on Snapchat now. Mm-hmm. Um, Snapping all the things. Just snapping away. I, I, Paul, that's all, Paul. I've never gone on Snapchat once in my entire life. So yeah, if you want to have some fun, we'll have like a little Snapchat party, lip syncing, dancing. Who knows? It's going to be fun. You never know with Paul. So, and uh, as always, you can join us on Patreon. We've got some new videos up. Uh, any video or any video, any support that you can give towards the podcast in, in general, we appreciate it. It all goes uh, towards the podcast and the queer community. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We want to give a special shout out yes. to the incredible Knight's Wishing Well with a K, like a knight in shining armor. Mm-hmm. The Knight's Wishing Well by Michael Finn Lang. He has been a consistent supporter. Um, he has allowed us now, uh, by mid, this is coming out, yeah, so yeah. by mid February, mm-hmm. the month coming up, we'll be able to upgrade our system. So, yeah. Yeah, that's so. a large part due to him because he has consistently supported and um, it's uh, really helped keep things going. Yeah, yeah, and then we've had a couple of consistent supporters, and we and honestly, we thank you guys so much uh, because, like I said, just constantly trying to improve, give you better content and better quality content. And if you're one so. of our two other major supporters, we do feel bad not like shouting you out every time. Give us something to shout out. Yeah, tell us what you want to. You have to a local you. event. Yeah. You want us to talk about whatever. Want us to talk, get you a, like a, a date. We can shout out that you're single. Um, oh, that. Oh, could you imagine? That's like the <laughs> ultimate like dating thing. Date this person. I don't want to say their name because maybe they don't want us to say. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but they'll say date um, Anthony. We don't have an Anthony. This yeah. Not you yet. Want to be the first Anthony. Somebody date Anthony. He needs a date. <laughs> he needs a nice long Twinkie. You got to watch our ASMR video. Go check it out. Go to YouTube. Check it out right now. Not right now. After this episode. Once we get to 4,000 subscribers, we'll do another one. We'll bump if our, you want. We'll bump our real Twinkies together in real mm, life. No. Yeah. We won't do that. But <laughs> if uh, 4,000 subscri- 4, followers on Twitter, we will release a second video. Um, we can do ASMR, which will default if nobody gives us any other suggestions. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, there's lots of other options. You know, if you want to see Evan do like the cinnamon challenge or anything no, like that. No, don't. Stop. I don't want to do any of these challenges. Well, that's because you're about, boring. How about a nice video maybe on politics? We can talk, sit and chat about just other options that you could consider. Do you want to stay at 10 subscribers on YouTube? Whatever. <laughs> Like, nobody talks about politics ever. No. Get those views. Get those views. So, um, what did you do this week? 
Well, thanks to your kind generosity. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Evan and I, Evan and I, <laughs> David and I went to go see Cats the Musical, and I cried. <laughs> David cry, oh. but see, I cried for the reason because I remember watching it on YouTube as a child and mm-hmm. thinking like, I wish, I hope I can go see this one day, and I got to see it, and it was emotional. <laughs> Don't you think that's emotional? It is emotional. Uh, I no, I shouldn't judge. I mean, that's the gayest thing I've ever heard in my life. But listen, Cats also... the Musical is beautiful. <laughs> David cried during Memory. Yeah, I cried when I started to see it. When you started, I know that whenever I see the Phantom in theaters, which I'm going to in theaters. When I see the Phantom in the theater, which I'm going to see on March 30th, I will burst into tears. The right. moment just because the first right. note plays, I'm going to burst That's what happened. Tears. Yeah. Just because like, you've, like, I've always wanted to do this in my life and I can yeah. finally do it. Like, exactly. That's literally the feeling I got. There you go. I am so glad you got that because, like I said, I not, was not looking forward to watching the <laughs> musical. And in all our years of friendship, Paul has never once mentioned that he wanted to see Cats the musical. I've always wanted to see Cats my whole never life. Never mentioned it. I have two if cats. If you had mentioned it I earlier, had like I would have given you a ticket earlier. In Indiana, like. I know. <laughs> I know you love cats. I should have put the two together, <laughs> but I didn't. That's my fault. My first cat was named after a cat from Cats. <laughs> but again, you never mentioned that until last week. You know nothing about me. <laughs> I guess. I don't know this man at all. So, <laughs> What about you? What did you do this week? Um, uh, I worked insane amount of hours. Um, and that was it. That was my life this work this week. Like, you did work a lot. Like I worked a stupid amount, stupid amount. But um, that's okay because and you didn't I get paid any it. extra. Nope, that's the beauty of being a salary employee. I feel like the government employees. That's not a good joke to make because they actually didn't get their paycheck, yeah. and I I did get a paycheck even though I didn't get paid for all the hours I worked. Still, but thankfully the government is reopened for three weeks. For three, for three weeks. weeks. For three weeks. Well, at the time of this coming out, it'll have been like. So like two weeks, roughly. Yeah, what's well, coming out in a couple of days? Yeah. So we, uh, what day is today? Friday. Today's okay. Friday. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, the good thing is that it's gonna open in, re- in time for people to get their paycheck. Mm-hmm. You know, and then if it closes down again, hopefully that'll lapse over and then they'll get their paycheck again. Plus, I believe they get uh, like for, interest. They get, I think they get back pay. They get back pay, of course, and they get, Do they um, get interest? some kind of. I thought there was some kind of interest, but I could be wrong. But at least people are getting their paychecks. Mm-hmm. I mean. Fucking, That's an awful. I can't, I can't believe the government's allowed to do that. I know. How can you just like not pay people when you know you're still going to be around? It's one thing if a business closes and it's like, oh well. It's not like the government's not going to be up and running right. again. You're gut. You're still the fucking government. The people still have jobs. You're just going to decide that you're not going to pay them. They need to like fix that. But you're going to require that they work. Go fuck yourselves. Mm-hmm. Jesus. It's really fucked up. You know, some senators voted against back pay for them. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised. Those grimy there, I think it was like seven Republican senators voted no to oh, back paying them. All the senators that got paid during the shutdown? Mm-hmm. The, oh, well, There was another wow, GOP surprise. governor like on an air flight like for personal reasons, and uh-huh. he was in the first class section. Uh-huh. And some guy on Twitter, they were up to him, they're like, oh, excuse me, senator. Wow, why are you in first class? Let me guess, this is paid for with my, with taxpayer money, right? <laughs> yeah. And the, and he's just like... Yeah, yeah hiding he's away. Like, oh, yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, exactly. Don't mind uh, the 57 people uh, who helped you get on this airport that aren't on this airplane that aren't getting paid, though. Right, yeah. Yeah, make sure you vote. What kind of, like piece of shit do you have to be to vote against back, back pay for these players like, I, like, yeah you have to be a real fucking piece of shit you really do you have to be the worst kind of find out who those senators are okay find out who they are make sure you're not voting for them which hopefully you're not voting for the Republican Party right now anyways but if you are make sure it's not one of those dipshits yeah research, speaking of dipshits huh research those people before yes. you put their name down yes research them but anyway speaking of dipshits Today is another episode of I'm Not Gay, You're Gay. We know you love them. We know you hate them. They're yeah, back. They're back. <laughs> and this in this series, we call out any queer bigots who ended up being queer themselves. And if you want to, you can listen to the first episode where we did this in episode 19 of our podcast. By the way, you can go now to our website, and we have a new search function, so you can look up uh, episodes, events, blogs, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so... Uh, you know, starting out, it didn't occur to me that, hey, maybe this is going to be a good feature. But now that we're getting in the mid-30s, I thought, how the hell are people going to, like, find a specific yeah. topic? You know, I don't want to sit there and scroll through and read every single name. So yeah. you can look up anywhere from uh, a person. You know, if you want to see if we have an episode on him, you can look up 
uh, bowling, like if you want to see if there's bowling events going on, mm-hmm. um, which right now our events are mostly centered around Providence. Yeah, you know, Rhode yeah. Island area. we haven't been able to branch out much further, which I don't have an update on February stuff yet, so uh, my, I gotta get that, but yeah. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so search on our website if we have any kind of information, event, content, article, episode, anything on it, you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, so check it out. Use your search function. Um, but <clears throat> moving on, it is timely that we are dropping this episode as news just broke a few days ago that former Mormon conversion therapist David Matheson just came out to say that he will now pursue a life as an openly gay man. While we do wish David the best, also what the fuck? What the fuck, David? For the last 30 years, David has been an outspoken proponent of conversion therapy, also known as reparative therapy or ex-gay therapy. Ugh. NBC reported the story as such. Conversion therapy is pseudoscience is a pseudoscientific practice that seeks to change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity. Talk therapy is currently the most commonly used technique, but the, some practitioners have also combined it with aversion therapy treatments, such as inducing vomit or electric shocks, according to a 2018 report by the UCLA's Williams Institute. Matheson stressed he never participated in aversion therapy. Nearly every major health association, including the American Medical Association and American Psychological Association, have denounced this practice. Matheson acknowledged his work has hurt some people. Oh, it's just hurt some people. Oh, God, yeah, just a little bit at the end there. But he would not fully renounce conversion therapy. Instead, he blamed what he referred to as the shame-based, homophobic-based system, which he actively participated in. Which you created, (laughs) but okay, go ahead. Of the Mormon church in which he was raised. He acknowledged that he perpetuated that system, but he also argued that he helped some men who wished to live in congruence with their faith. So... It, he's just like, yes, I, um, I heard a lot of people, but also there were people that felt that homosexuality was wrong, and I helped them to live according to their faith. Oh, God, <laughs> Loki just, Loki didn't like what I said, because he just reached up, and he said, stop, stop talking, Evan. He just wanted a pet. Okay. That's all he wanted. Look. Anyways, um, yeah, so fucking David here um, is just like, look, I was just helping people live by their faith. And I think part of this is that it's all fresh for him. He hasn't been far enough removed to see what an asshole he is. And also, he's immediately going to get defensive. You know, everybody of does he is. it. So it's his life work. His life work. And and I'm sure there were men that at the time felt that they were really helped. Like you right. saved him from being gay. I'm saved sure there was their maybe a thing. handful. Well, I mean, at the time, they probably felt like they were saved. Like I know that when I went to my therapy and when I got married, I was like. Yes, praise Jesus, I've been saved. And then, like, within a few months, I was like, no, fuck, I'm not saved. So, (laughs) didn't work. Uh, uh, Matheson continued to say, I know there are people who won't be satisfied with anything less than a complete and unequivocal renunciation of everything. That's hard because I want people to feel the genuineness of the change of my heart, but people need to understand that there is more than one reality in the world. To those who feel harmed by his past work, he relayed a message, I unequivocally apologize. So, um, yeah, I guess... I think in time he'll learn that what he did was very bad. Yeah. Like you said, it's probably... It could be a freshness thing. I hope that he, like, realizes Mm -hmm. what he did was so fucked up. Um, Yeah, I don't even think he's reconciled his own beliefs. I mean, I know that, again, for me... After leaving the church and being out for, I still remember, and I've talked about it, the moment, like a year and a half after I was out, like, realizing I'm not okay with the fact that I'm gay. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm living out and proud, and I'm not okay with that. And so, it takes a really long time to heal from this. And certainly, the church, the Mormon church, and uh, that religion in general is to blame for this. That is the root cause. But you did perpetuate it, and even just because you turn around and you're gay now or you're coming out as gay now, doesn't make it any less. But whatever. Hmm. <clears throat> so in light of this coming out, let's talk about the queer phobes who ended up being pretty queer themselves. First up on our list is Ralph Shorty. Shorty was an Oklahoma congressman first elected to the Senate in 2010. He ran on a strong campaign of family values. 
Once elected, he repeatedly voted against LGBTQ rights including supporting legislation that would allow businesses to discriminate against queer citizens. He also introduced a bill to the Senate to increase the penalties for drug possession within 1,000 feet of a church or a school, which, Oma, which Oklahoma voters had voted to classify as a misdemeanor instead of a felony. Which, yeah, they had already voted against it. They were already were like, it doesn't really matter where you sell drugs. Um, yeah, but you're he, selling drugs. Exactly, but he reintroduced it, which is just so... <laughs> so I get the school thing a little bit. I yeah. get the school thing because you're, you're trying to protect kids from drugs. Mm-hmm. But the church thing, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, well, what is it? Like, God's church gonna people, you. most church people, <laughs> a portion of church people. Okay, are, we're really reducing it here. I just don't want to offend, because I'm sure we have some religious listeners. I know yeah. we have religious yeah, listeners. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And I don't want everyone to feel that we believe that they're crazy or weird because of their religion. If you believe in something, believe in it. Just yeah. don't attempt to force that on someone or belittle someone because of your beliefs. Right, exactly. And if you're listening to this podcast, you probably aren't one of those people, but go ahead. Yeah, but what I'm saying is the people who do do that are fucking annoying. Oh, so fucking annoying. Like, the top ten most annoying type of person. Oh, definitely. I, I don't know. Yeah. Few, few people are more annoying than the guy that's like, this is my religious belief, and everyone needs to follow it, and I can't fucking understand why you don't want to follow it. Yeah. And I don't know why you're mad at me, and I don't know why you're calling me a homophobe, why just because are you I said me? that you should have to have a marriage that's in concordance with what God said in the Bible. Why are you persecuting? Per- <laughs> you said persecuting. What's Why it? are you persecuting me? Oh God, the questions are so persecuted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I so there's this thing trending on uh, Twitter right now, which who knows it'll still be trending when this episode drops. Uh-huh. But it's exposed Christian school, yes, yes, and yes. it all goes back to the whole Covington Catholic school thing with the with the kid that confronted the Native American and and exposing you know that. The racism in the Catholic school, and then mm-hmm. just exposing Christian schools in general, and so um, people on there are just like, "Oh, take it another swipe at Christians, huh? How about <laughs> how about expose Christian phobia? <laughs> how about expose Christian phobia? God, this so much. Phobia. It's just so bad for the Christians right now. I it swear. Is. I mean, you can only buy a Bible in every store. Mm-hmm. And- there's only a church on every street, and right. they're only allowed to participate in government uh, things yeah. without paying taxes. Oh, yeah. And, you know. I mean, basically every single fucking thing that they want or need, but um, they can actively discriminate against uh, uh, queer people in most states. Mm-hmm. They, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's uh, Christian uh, homeless shelters that are filing to be able to deny transgender and queer people the right to stay in their homeless yeah. shelter. But yes, yeah, you guys are so bad right now. It's awful. <laughs> the fact that other people um, are trying to make you open your worldview a slightly bit. But Shorty was most famous, so going to that extremism, he was most famous for his fetus, not food bill. I took that from, uh, what is it? I was thinking of fish are not food, but from from Finding Nemo. Oh yeah, yeah. Fish are friends, not food. There you go. Anyways, fetus not food bill. In 2012, the congressman proposed a legislation to outlaw the use of aborted fetuses in food. Not that there was any evidence that there had ever been aborted fetuses in food. Although if there was, I bet it would be in a McDonald's hamburger. To be honest, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Who knows what's oh in that? My God. <laughs> But, so despite the fact that nobody is putting aborted, feet, aborted fetuses in their food and it was widely ridiculed, the bill didn't even receive a committee hearing. That's how ridiculous it was. People were just like, what the actual fuck is this? <laughs> Oklahoma, I mean, come on. But they voted the guy in again. They gave him this, he wrote two terms. They voted him in 2010 and then you will get in 2014 uh, despite his fetuses in food. Uh, but Shorty pressed on, offering up one extremist stance after another, though he only showed up when a vote mattered to him. <laughs> it is reported that Shorty missed over half of the Senate votes during his tenure. Holy fuck. Yeah. So yeah. what happens if you don't go? Does your vote just like... You just, like you just don't... Re- yeah, no, you just don't... Yeah, you don't represent your... Like, you're supposed... The entire... Your whole fucking job is to represent your community. So your community just doesn't get that You're right. Yeah, you've, your community just doesn't get represented. And they voted him in. What the fuck? Yeah. Maybe he missed so many votes because he was too busy fucking teenage boys. The following was taken directly from Wikipedia and police film footage of the event. <laughs> 
On March 16, 2017, Shorty, Shorty was charged by the Cleveland County District Attorney with three felony counts, soliciting a minor for prostitution, prostitution within 1,000 feet of a, guess it, church. What? Shouldn't it have been a felony? And mm -hmm. transporting someone for prostitution after he was caught with a 17-year-old boy in a motel room in Moore, Oklahoma. Police reported a strong odor of raw marijuana. A thousand feet from a church? I can't believe it. Oh. Uh, which was emanating from the room. According to an affidavit, the duo told police they had brought marijuana with them, which Shorty said they were smoking when police arrived. I thought he was going to say he just brought it to Tempton. I, I was, oh, I know, like the Ted <laughs> defense. I, I just like to put it in my pile of temptations. My pile of temptations that I keep over in my corner, <laughs> and I was going to, but I didn't, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to watch the video. Go to YouTube. Just look up Ralph Shorty. You can see all of this. You can watch this video. It's actually on our Facebook page as well. I posted it a while back. So a video from the arrest released by Moore police show Shorty in the motel room wearing a t-shirt that reads, now go make me a sandwich. And above the cartoon drawing of a sandwich, it cites Ephesians 522, which is wives submit yourselves unto your husband as unto the Lord. Uh, so just a sexist fucking shirt. You didn't have that memorized or anything. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was not in the notes. I just threw that in there for you guys. Hey Queerstians, do you own a business? Are you an author or an entertainer? And would you like a great way to grow your audience? Well, this commercial slot could be yours. For just $20 a month, we can advertise your show on our podcast. And as a rapidly growing queer content source, we want to help get your name out there. So if you want even more promotion, you can just choose our $30 tier to get ads and links on our website. And for only $40 a month, we'll review your product on our YouTube channel and link it to all of our social media. So go ahead, send an email to your queer story at gmail today or reach out to us on social media via messenger and let us make your business a little more queer bye, bye. um so police said that they discovered sexually explicit text messages messages between the two in which shorty called the teen baby boy and offered him cash in exchange for sexual acts the actual word was sexual stuff because I guess he was trying to be sly. Like, here's some money for some sexual stuff. They're never going to be able to crack this code. <laughs> Shorty turned himself in the same day and was released on a $100,000 bond. God, what the fuck? This guy. This motherfucker. Are you kidding hey, but me? But it gets better. It? it gets better. I know it gets better. I know it gets better. I'm sorry. I'm Wait, sorry. You skipped it. You skipped it. Uh, uh, oh, no, that's you. That's you. That's you. Go ahead. You'll never guess by they else they have. You'll blah, blah. never guess. You'll never else... Oh my god, you'll never guess what else they found. <laughs> yes. Prosecutors also found traces of child pornography mm. on Shorty's phone and computer, as well as evidence that he had distributed the child pornography to others. Oh. Not surprisingly, Short Shorty's wife of 16 years divorced him, took their four children away, and charged and changed all of their last names. Shorty himself was sentenced to 15 years in prison and sentenced of his congressional rights. 15 years? Wow, that's so long. 15 years, Jesus. I mean, we only have, like, a huge-ass percentage of the African-American community serving life for marijuana. Exactly, but... for having a joint in their pocket. But, God, you fucking um, raped a 17-year-old boy, because that's what it is, um, and you ha distributed, you, you viewed and distributed child pornography, and you only got fucking... 15 years and honestly when they take like time served and uh time out for good behavior and all that fucking shit i don't know he was federally prosecuted so he might have to serve most of it when you're uh, prosecuted by the state that's when you get the really reduced yeah. sentences but god what a piece of that shit that just shows you how american government works and right? yeah <clears throat> I, this guy this is guy the worst. is just a piece of work. The word I just will never understand the mentality and the hypocrisy of calling out the the gay community and attacking us, and then doing those same things. And, and it's always this, all this. It's always this stuff. It's always you're gay and drugs are involved and all this stuff. All the stuff that you were fighting so hard against. I mm -hmm. mean, if the man could have had an abortion, he would have had three. Yeah, like literally. that kind literally. of fucking shit. All right, so moving on, we'll quickly touch on the story of Pastor George Nelson Gregory. Gregory is the pastor of Waterfront Christian Community Church in West Homestead, Pennsylvania. We cannot say for sure that Gregory was act has actually preached homophobia. Uh, all of the so this story broke um, a couple 
I, I guess it's about a year ago now. Mm-hmm. But um, everything, like the website and all the information has been taken down. Um, people didn't have enough time to really pull info before then. They didn't have all the backups. Yeah, we do know that uh, Gregory preached often against the sins of the flesh. And maybe he doesn't think the following story applies to the sins of the flesh. They never do. Never. never. It doesn't count for me. According to a criminal complaint, officers were called to a scene and found two men inside the vehicle. Police say one man, identified as 61-year-old George Nelson Gregory of Monhall, was in the back seat, and the other man was completely naked and bound with nylon rope in the front seat. <laughs> casual, casual Thursday. Casual yep, Thursday. Yep. <laughs> the criminal complaint says when officers asked what was going on, Gregory told the officer that they were just they were just playing. We're playing doctor. Just playing a game. <laughs> we're, just, we're playing doctor. <laughs> uh, and he and the other man meet up from time to time to play with each other. That's all. We're just having a little we're just fun. Having games. Two grown men just playing, playing doctor. Playing. One of us is naked and ain't nothing gay about it. <laughs> the other man confirmed that what they were doing was consensual. I'm tied up. I want it to be in the car. Yep. You know, well, my wife's at home. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it was consensual. They're gro- two grown yeah, men. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just the fact that, you yeah. know, you're going to get up and preach against the sins of the flesh and, and then completely deny it. So the man who reported the suspicious vehicle told police that at one point he saw the second man get out of the vehicle without any clothes on. <laughs> and he was concerned because he call, because the car was parked outside his daughter's window. What? <laughs> I don't know what is happening in this neighborhood. Could you imagine just looking outside? It's a guy looking um, up. Uh, Cheryl, Cheryl, get over here. Is that a naked man <laughs> running around outside of Bethany's window? <laughs> <laughs> Bethany. Go watch, go watch Baby Shark. <laughs> yeah, go, go in the other room, honey. <laughs> Gregory allegedly told the, the, the officers he thought they were in a private place. And when an officer said, <laughs> uh, your vehicle's on a well-lit public street in a clear view of several homes, Gregory told the police, I know. <laughs> Gregory, <laughs> Gregory also says none of that is true. None, none of this ever no, happened. No, no. That conversation never happened. I have nothing to hide. I did nothing wrong. I was counseling a young man with a drug problem. It did turn <laughs> strange. <laughs> These are his quotes. It did turn strange, <laughs> but it wasn't my doing, okay? I don't know how I got tied up. <laughs> I know. That's what I love. <laughs> I don't know how he got tied up. I don't know. I he, the how man the, is bound with the tie. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I know a thing or two about tying people up. I don't want to talk about my past life, but I know a few things. I've counseled a lot of people. If you get my drift, and um, you don't just you can't tie yourself up. You can do a lot of things, but you can't. He has tie a ball yourself gag up. in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Hands tied behind his back, ball gag in his mouth, butt plug, and he's like, "I had no part in that. I don't know how he did it. He's a magician, sir." I was adamant that I'm not participating in that way. And so that's when the police pulled up and they assume things, but I'm standing by my story. It's not true. <laughs> He's just counseling the man. Just It's a regular counseling session. He needs, you know, some therapy. You know what? If that's your thing, do it. And don't do it. Thing. Don't do it in front of your uh, child's window. No. You should yeah. probably find a private mm-hmm. place for that. But if that's your thing, do it. But and just again, do it. It doesn't matter. It's it's fine. And don't tell other people not to do it. Yeah, it's fine if you if that's your kink. Nothing wrong with it. It's the fact that you're just talking about the sins of the flesh and also um, that he had a wife of 35 fucking years yep. waiting at home for him, which maybe she knew, but I'm going to guess she didn't. Probably not. I'm, I'm sure, I'm she sure didn't. she thought her wife, her husband was... You know, on the he's, holy roller, like he's a preach. He's like she's honey, like, a, she's got I gotta nothing to go, worry about. I gotta go have another counseling session. <laughs> oh, you're going to save that young boy. I, I tell you, I'm going to get real tied up because that's what happens. I get tied up in these counseling <laughs> sessions. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know what's going on. So, uh, regardless of whether the pastor uh, is a homophobe or not, um, maybe his wife should reconsider things. I don't know. Maybe they got an open marriage, but something needs to change, Erica. Something's not adding up. Yeah. So, Best luck to you, Pastor. <clears throat> One of the most prominent anti-queer pastors ever accused of being queer himself was Pastor Eddie Long. Long built his church from a mere 300 people to over 25,000. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. He was an adamant and vocal opponent of same-sex marriage and a close supporter of former President George W. Bush. He was so well-liked that the family of Martin Luther King Jr. asked Long 
to perform the funeral of King's wife, Coretta Scott King. And in 2006, he did, you know, he'll, he's a very prominent um, pastor. He's an African-American pastor. Mm -hmm. Not that it matters, but uh, that's partly why also you would be performing the funeral for Coretta right. Scott yeah. King. Oh, however, things begin to sour for Eddie Long in the early 2000s. In 2005, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported that between 1997 and 2000, Long received more than three hundred, more than three million dollars worth of compensation and benefits from his nonprofit charity, Bishop Eddie Long Ministries Incorporated. That's suspicious. When your charity is named after your name, and you're not like, I don't know, you're not dead. Yeah. You can only name a charity after someone if they've already died. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Long contended that the charity did not solicit donations from members, but instead gained its income from royalties, speaking fees, and several large donations because you got to make sure you, you pay that pastor a lot of money to speak. Yep. In 2007, a three-year investigation by the United States Senate Committee on Finance into the tax exempt status of six ministries, including Long's, concluded that there were no definitive findings of wrongdoings. But donations to the drop church dropped significantly following the investigation of Long's salary and church finances. Surprise. Yeah. Another issue arose from Long's open support of President Bush. Reverend Timothy McDonald suggested a link between Long's anti-gay activity and a $1 million grant from the United States Administration for Children and Families. McDonald stated... If you look at the black pastors who have come out with the faith with the faith based money, they're the same ones who have come out with campaigns on the gay marriage issue. And it wouldn't surprise us at all if Bush had funded Long's anti gay activities. What does surprise us is what follows. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so he just wakes up with a million dollars in grant money from Bush, but it has nothing to do with the fact that he's no, campaigning no, against no, no. gay same sex marriage. In September two thousand ten, Maurice Robinson, Anthony Flagg, Jamal Paris and Spencer Legrand filed separate lawsuits alleging that Long used his pastoral influence to coerce them into sexual relationships with him. The plaintiffs stated that Long placed the men on the church's payroll, bought them cars and other gifts, including overseas trips. The, laws also, the lawsuits also stated that Long would discuss the Holy Scripture to justify and support the sexual activity, which is um, also what my ex-pastor, who's currently serving in prison, did with his uh, 16-year-old, um, the, the girl that he was abusing, um, you know, he would tell her about how God wanted them to be together and mm -hmm. this was his plan and blah, 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 blah. So this is four young men. So yep. you could say, like, a lot of people are like, oh, this is the FBI just trying to get a black pastor. And we're not saying that the FBI can't be shitheads. But when four of your separate members, when four members from your church file separate lawsuits against you, I mean, come on, people. Yeah, something ain't yeah. adding up. Something ain't adding up, okay? Something ain't adding up. Why, and also, why the fuck is he buying them cars and trips? And come on, people. That's turning <laughs> a blind eye, and that's some bullshit. With all the sexual harassment that's running rampant in churches right now that we're discovering, you can't call out the Catholic Church and its abusive priests and not call out your Baptist preachers. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Oh, yeah. Predator is a predator is a predator. Absolutely. Um, while Eddie denies these allegations, replying, I've been accused, I'm under attack, I want you to know, as I said earlier, I am not a perfect man, but this thing, I'm going to fight. He later settled out of court with the plaintiffs. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, wow, I'm going to fight this thing. Let's just quietly settle out of court. Yeah, uh, oh. let's just get this over with. I did nothing, but I'm just going to settle with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Later on, media outlets indicated that Santino Kempt was the fifth accuser who also settled. Five men. Five men accused uh, the preacher. Yeah. yeah, and he settled. He got got him quiet real quick. Yeah. <laughs> For the rest of his life, Eddie Long would be chased by these allegations. He died of a mysterious illness on January fifteenth, two thousand seventeen. Church officials released a statement saying his death was a result of an aggressive form of cancer. But there has been evidence. Of, hasn't been. There hasn't been no evidence. Sorry. But there hasn't been any evidence to support this claim, and one must wonder why the pastor was so secretive about his illness. Yeah, in 2016, he suddenly just started losing a lot of weight, started getting really sick, wouldn't talk about it, wouldn't tell anyone, which this guy who fucking lives in front of the camera. Yeah. And like, I mean, if this guy really had cancer, I mean, maybe he did, but the guy that's always turned everything into a story, I can't imagine him not him having cancer not turning it into oh, campaign. Yeah. 
right? Yeah, easy money. Exactly. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like it's a good thing, but like no, for but him, saying, he would have manipulated it to be exactly. He talks about everything, and all of a sudden, he's not talking about his illness. He, you know, drops all the weight, and then he dies. And then the church officials finally, after a year of this, are like, "Yeah, he just had an aggressive form." And of cancer. that was it. That's the end. That was it. No, that's it. Case closed. We're moving on. So, and last but not least, while this homophobe hasn't been accused of being gay, not yet, we do have to list his hypocrisy in this episode. I, we just have to talk about it because this guy has been atrocious to the gay community and he's a fucking piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, news broke about him like uh, about three weeks ago. So perhaps you've heard of Steve Anderson. He's the preacher who calls for sodomites to be stoned. He's been in a lot of documentaries mm-hmm. about America and things. And no, not in the good way. Stoned, not in the good way. Oh. <laughs> um, not the way that um, Ralph Shorty was getting stoned with the 17-year-old boy toy. And his right-hand man, Steve Anderson's right-hand man, Donnie Romero, is no better. In 2016, Romero made headlines when he praised Pulse nightclub shooter Omar Mateen, what, Mateen, for making the world a better place by ridding us of sodomites, perverts, and pedophiles. Mm, trigger warning. You know, I never wish bad upon people, but this motherfucker, like, if something happened to him, it would, like, I don't really believe in I karma or anything like that, but, like, oh yeah, that, no. like, would be, like, some shit. Oh, yeah, no, it, it only gets worse. Again, trigger warning. This is a fucking asswipe. Romero continued on his rampage, screaming from the pulpit, There are still several dozen of these cunts in ICU. I will pray to God that God will finish the job that man started, he said. Afterwards, he defended his aberrant remarks in an interview with Fox News, saying, The Bible teaches that they are predators, and I believe that every sodomite is a pedophile and a pervert. Just like if there is a building that had a bunch of rapists or evil murderous people, and the building collapsed on them if something happened where they were all killed, I don't think it's something we should all mourn over because they are all evil people. (laughs) how right. like that's literally the most ignorant rude <laughs> rude like rude is i understand it's like i, I uh, oh i know i right? don't get triggered by much but, i like rarely mm-hmm. get triggered because i'm just like this is life but like that is the most hateful thing i think i've ever read exactly and it, especially when you put it in the context of the, he said this like days after the pulse right. nightclub like 49 people gunned down and he comes out and says this fucking... And he says, and there's still cunts alive in the ICU, and I hope that God finishes them off. Mm-hmm. What an awful piece of shit. That, he's an awful human being. Awful human being. Um, and <clears throat> I have to say, um, I don't know Donnie personally. I know Steve a little bit. We went to college together. So we went to the same IFB, Independent Fundamental Baptist College. I think Donnie went to there. I don't know. He might have gone to one of our branches. So this is people that ran in the circle that I grew up in. Fucking awful. Awful Mm -hmm. people. You gotta watch out for the IFB. So, uh, and as this hat set... (laughs) And as this asshat sat on his high horse, laughing at the slaughter of innocent people, he was, of course, hiding his own secrets. Just a few weeks ago, news broke that Romero was stepping down as pastor pastor of Steadfast Baptist Church, a church labeled a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center, by the way. Romero stated in his own words that he went to a casino in Jacksonville where he cheated on his wife with prostitutes multiple times, drank and gambled multiple times, and even smoked weed. I did sins that I went back to sins that I committed before in the past and even caused me to commit sins that I'd never done before. So he's literally saying that he's done this shit before, right. too. Like, when the fuck? Like, God, you fucking fuck. Fucker. But these people who are committing quote unquote sins in his eyes, those oh, those yeah. sins are worth death. Oh, they should all be slaughtered. But you cheating on your wife, bringing Gam- back probably gambling, STDs because like... you're too much of a dumb fuck to wear a condom. Yeah, and all these other yeah. quote unquote sins that you committed, like. But that's fine. That's fine because it was you. Oh yeah, it's okay because God's and you can watch all of this. Literally, go to YouTube because this motherfucker is so egotistical that he talked about all this on YouTube. Like he posted his video about how he said, "And I just hope I can turn my life back around and God can forgive me." Fuck! If there is a God, He left you back when you said those awful things. You dumb fuck. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, yeah, awful person. And may we say to you, Romero, hope it all continues to crash and burn in front of your 
fucking eyes. <laughs> we hope you're prosecuted for buying illegal drugs and sleeping with prosecutors. Yeah, because not having heard any of that yet. Oh like, no, you, he's you, gonna, he's probably gonna walk right, away. Right, he li- it's I think it's in Arizona, but like you had you're smoking marijuana and you're sleeping with prostitutes. I'm pretty positive that's not legal marijuana. I think both of those things should be legal, but since it's not, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yep. Uh, we hope your wife can find a real lover and a partner who isn't some psychopath, and we hope your children are able to grow up with a real role model and not the piece of shit that you are. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. And to all the bigots out there who have brought pain to the community only to take advantage of us, we offer these words from the queer goddess RuPaul. If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love anybody else? That's right, bitches. So uh, that's just a little bit of news for you, Christians. We love you. We will see you next week as we kick off our Black History Month and the celebrate, of, celebrate queer people of color. It's going to be great covering some fantastic, wonderful people from history that are often overlooked. Yeah, exactly. Um, So make sure you tune in. Make sure you go subscribe, download, uh, follow us on social media. Snap us. Snap us hard. (laughs) Watch watch us bump our Twinkies on YouTube. And And, uh, um, stay queer. Don't get a lobotomy. We love you, our succulent sapphus. And um, bump your Twinkie. You allied hookers. Bye. Bye.